finally, finally, it's been so long. It's been forever. It's been forever. But let me tell you, 2024 is finally here. The 2024 season, that is college football, is finally here. And to all the newbies, you know, because I know people have been subbing on and off lately. I don't know what's going on there. Again, I don't see who subs and who doesn't sub to this channel. So just keep that in mind. For the most part, I don't see who subs and who doesn't sub to this channel. We'll just preface that right now. I don't know who subs to this channel. I'm <laughs> Sometimes I'm genuinely curious. Why do you all sub here? But that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. Some people... Do in fact know me some people don't some people you know somehow have to find my channel it is what it is but you know that's the issue over there so i did remove my twitter from you know my bio because I mean, nobody nobody followed me on twitter anyway so no reason to no reason to really do the do anything with twitter because like nobody follows me there nobody follows me for my twitter takes or anything so i was just like eh, whatever but anyway College football, college football is here, and finally, finally, I can talk about some games. I know people, I know some teams are setting their starters and stuff like that, and I'm genuinely surprised at some of these guys. You know, I'm like Malik Murphy's at Duke. Are you serious, Malik Murphy? He's at Duke. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, let's talk about these other games first. I want to talk about these other games first. Um, again, uh, I don't know where, where to begin. Let, let's start with McNeese and Tarleton. Again, the UAC or whatever, which I don't really care about at all. It's a thing. Tarleton is ranked and, you know, I believe the spread is like, I, I want to say the spread when I last saw it, it was like 18 and a half or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I I don't really care for this game. This game got moved up for basically no reason. It got moved up for basically no reason. I mean, it was kind of just to fill some time, you know, when something else could be airing in that mid-afternoon window, but it's fine. It moved it up to ESPN2, too. So Tarleton should win. Again, I don't have high hopes for most conferences not named the SOCON, the CAA, the – Missouri Valley and the Big Sky. I don't have high hope for any conferences not named those four. And it's going to be the same thing with the FBS. It's going to be the same thing with the major D1 college football. It's going to be the same thing with the Big Ten and the SEC taking all the bids. It's re that's really how this is. So like, and that's why I hate it so much. That's why I hate the 12 team playoffs so much. But we're not going to again. We're not going to we're not going to dwell on it too long. You know. Um, Montana State is actually favored against New Mexico. Montana State, you know, I believe they still have Tommy Malott. They still have him at, you know, at quarterback. They still have him. So we'll see how in the world that works out because, like, it's going to be interesting. Um, Florida A&M, Norfolk State, the MEAC SWAC Challenge. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. I I wanted to care, but at the end of the day, I'm just like no. At this point, I'm just like no. You know, I, the celebration mode kind of lost all meaning to me the last couple of years. I mean, I really, I really, really wanted to like it. I really, really wanted to, but. The end of the day, I don't think I'm going to be watching the celebration more anymore, and I don't think I'm going to be. I, I barely watched HBCU football as it is, and it's generally it's generally not you know not nobody's there for the games, everybody's there for the bands, and I'm here for football. I'm not here to you know, watch bands. So um, watch celebration both from the beginning, you know, of course, 2016, the probably one of the greatest um, bowl games I think I've ever seen. You know. Defensive slugfest that ended with a celebration taunting penalty, uh, penalty. But you know, ultimately, the last few years, I just kind of have been kind of eh. I don't particularly care at this point. I don't particularly care. Just 
it just doesn't mean anything when you're playing for bowls and there's national championships going on at this point. Like, come on. We're, we're, now with the 12-team playoff, you know, again, I'm kind of interested at the same time. I hate it, but I'm interested. I want to watch it. I want to watch 12-team playoff. I want to watch teams play for a national championship, legitimate national championships. Please, NCAA, get, you know, even though you're incompetent, get in there and do something about it. You know, get in there and do something about it. Um, North Alabama and Southeast Missouri State, again, that's the actual FCS. The game has lost all meaning over the past few years. This was supposed to be, you know, the FCS kickoff is supposed to be, supposed to be, you know, showcasing the best of the FCS. Instead, it doesn't. The game has been in Crampton for God knows how long, and that game has been on a mid for God knows how long. It's boring. It's boring at this point. No, no need to watch it. Neither of those two teams are even ranked in the FCS polls. Tarleton is. SMU Nevada is the only other, you know, FBS on FBS game that's this weekend. And it's basically the debut of SMU and the ACC. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting to see how SMU can adjust because now they are back in a power conference. And you know now they have they have all the money and all that stuff that they can throw at you know guys and stuff like that. Now you don't have to get penalized and get the death penalty. You can you can do whatever you want to now with the NIL and the transfer portal. Um, Nevada is uh, probably going to be you know another interesting. It's going to be another interesting case in the Mountain West this year. But you know, again, my knowledge of the G five has been very very lacking. Over the past couple of months, again, uh, I kind of tune out once it's January and I try and keep up, you know, throughout, you know, the spring of the summer. But it's it's kind of hard, you know, lots of college football teams to talk about. So it's like, uh, I don't know, man. And then the nightcap, before we talk about the game of the week, which is really the only game you should be watching. And I'll give my reasons why in a moment. But Delaware State, Hawaii, we found out today that Delaware State, you know, didn't get on their flight. They missed their flight and had to basically split up their team to get guys to Hawaii. Delaware State is one of the worst football programs in FCS. Definitely the worst HBCU football program. Definitely one of the worst overall in FCS. Um, and I know, you know, some people are like, well, at least one, you know, one guy I'm a good friend with. He was he's pretty vocal about you know HBCUs and stuff like that. And he wants the exposure for HBCUs, but you gotta understand that Hawaii TV contract kind of dictates you know a lot of things at this point for some reason, even though it shouldn't. Those games should be on True TV, honestly. But you know, it's neither here nor there. Um, yeah. Delaware State is probably going to lose to Hawaii. Montana State probably will beat New Mexico, though. I do think that will happen. But, yeah, game of the week. Game of the week is a game in Dublin, Ireland. And this is why. The number 10 preseason ranked Florida State Seminoles take on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Game day will be there, of course. Seamus will be there, of course. Oh yes, I said Seamus. Yeah, uh, I, I think I think I've made it no secret that I'm a WWE fan. I think I made it no secret over the past year that I'm a big WWE fan. You know, at the time of me writing this, at the time of me, um, or rather, at the time of me, you know, um, putting this initially in for the ticker. The spread was at 11.5 in favor of Florida State. The spread has now jumped up to 13, and that was four hours ago. So that was a little over four hours ago when I'm looking at the odds again. That was a little over four hours ago. So, yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting. This is going to be very interesting. Um, I think, I, I think, you know, with the way with the way things are, Georgia Georgia Tech has you know something that can keep them in this game. 
but I think you know it's gonna be it's gonna take a little bit more from DJ Uilaka Lele, you know, a company to you know really really kind of you know it's gonna take a lot more you know disaster from the Knowles to kind of you know just kind of you know not ease their way through this game, and I think King is still George's. Georgia Tech's QB, if I'm not mistaken, Mike Norville's offense, you know, you know, at times last year I was really vibing with his offense, was vibing with that spread offense, and it should be very powerful yet again this year. Georgia Tech, you know, has their own spread offense that's pretty, you know, it, 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 can, it can do some damage when it can, but other times it can't. And I don't know if this is going to be, you know, the same. Florida State is a team that, you know, has a lot of upside to them. You know, you know, there, 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 there's, there's a lot, there's a lot there. Um, the defense for Georgia Tech is a little bit suspect. You know, the offense, Florida State. You know, can it click? Can it click in time before AC before the rest of ACC play starts? Because it's the opener. Then you get you know you get your non conference in, you get a little non conference in after this Florida State. And then you know you get back into ACC play. So the, that's the big question. Florida State are they going? Is their offense going to be? You know, is it going to be completely in control? Georgia Tech. You know, a lot of people are like, oh well, we. We don't know, you know, Georgia Tech's defense is kind of in, you know, and like yada, yada, yada. But it's the first game of the season, you know. Teams can play up to their composition in the first game of the season. Teams can definitely play up. And teams can definitely play down. We've seen that last year. We've seen that many years prior. We've seen it so many times in college football that teams, you know, can play up and down to their competition. So the spread while being 13 it could definitely be a closer game than a two touchdown game i definitely think that will happen but i still think at the end of the day florida state will win this game and the over under for this game is 55 and a half and there's some other bets that you might want to place if you're interested in placing bets but um the current spread is 11 and a half it, uh, or at least the one that i have but it's now risen up to 13 again and the over-under is 55 and a half, so that's remained the same. So, um, in any case, I know we're going to talk a little bit more about, you know, week one starters and stuff like that next week and stuff, but at the end of the day, it has been great to come back and talk about college football because, you know, this past couple weeks have been, you know, it's been it's been a, it's been a it's been a slow grind the past couple weeks. I'll admit that. But I'm happy to be talking college football every Tuesday yet again at, you know, at usually at about 7 o'clock Central Time. So you, that's when usually the, you'll see me talk college football. So, um, again, the game of the week is probably the only game I'm going to be watching, just to be real again. And I want to explain that. I want to explain something real quick. I want to explain. You have to be ranked this year. You have to be ranked. You you know, there's the top five conference champions, and it doesn't matter, you know, if the if the ACC is the six highest conference champion, you know, or they're not one of the seven at large bids, then you know, they're out. Or the Big 12 or the Big Ten or the SEC, whoever, it doesn't matter. You know, again, Notre Dame has to join the conference at some point because they want that buy at some point, I think. But this year being ranked matters so much more than ever, and that is why we're, you know, I've done it. I've done it as far as I can tell over the years when I, you know, talk to college football and stuff like that, but I'm definitely hyper-focusing on the fact that teams need to be ranked. You know, group of five teams, well, technically group of six, you know, Pac-12, kind of dead and all. You know, G5 teams have a, have a big uphill battle to climb, and the murkiness of it all with, you know, who's going to win what conference and yada, yada, yada with the five conference champions thing and the big conferences, you have to be ranked this year. You have to be ranked in order for me to really say something about you. You, you, you know, you have to prove yourself, you know, 
AP poll is the one we follow until the college football playoff rankings come out in November. So crack that AP poll. And we'll definitely talk about you. Yeah. Again, being ranked matters so much more than ever. You have to be one of those seven at large bids. You know, if you're a lower tier power five school or a group of five school, you have to be one of those seven at large bids. If you're one of those teams that's kind of there, but not, not the tippity top type team like a Georgia or Ohio State or, or a Texas or an Alabama or, or whoever is at the top this year. You have to be you have to at least be chasing the conference championship. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is obviously get a good enough record that you can be considered for an at large spot. And be ranked. That's the third thing. So that's three things that we all need to focus on this year. That's three things from me to you guys on YouTube to the teams themselves and whoever, you know, whatever team that you're a fan of. Hey. Go out and support your team. I'm definitely thinking about going to a college football game this year, but I don't know. I don't think I'll have the money for that. I thought I was going to do Red River this year, but I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go to Red River. That costs money. That costs a lot of money. And I ain't got money like that. So, yeah, being ranked matters so much more than ever. So, for me to you, I'll see you all on Sunday. And we'll talk some lacrosse. We'll talk the Mento Cup for the last time on this channel because I'm, I'm quite done talking about the Mento at this point. I'm quite done. Quite done talking about the man. It's quite done talking about, you know, the West, you know, BC doing their thing and putting games behind paywalls and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, for me to you, uh, I'm going to get on about it here. And I hope you all enjoy your day. Who do you have winning Florida State, Georgia Tech? That game, again, will be Saturday. It will open up the college football season at 11 a.m. Central Time on ESPN. So make sure you tune in to ESPN for the festivities that morning and that day because it's going to be fun.